Hi, uh, this is Jack Stanley, and this is going to be my last talk, a short talk on the RMS Titanic and things that I find that aren't talked about very often and that should be because they're very, very important. And actually, I wanted to save the most important for last. And this was the most dangerous thing that happened to the Titanic after hitting the iceberg. Now, of course, we have to understand with the damage that was done by the iceberg, the iceberg was sighted like less than a minute before it was hit. And of course, you got to remember that the bells were rung, the lookouts, Frederick Fleet, called the bridge, Moody answered, and he said, iceberg, right ahead. And Moody said, thank you. At that same time, Murdoch, who was on the bridge, saw the ice, ran in, hit the telemotor to hard a starboard, which sent the message to the engine room to stop the engines and go in reverse, which takes a little while. It doesn't happen like that. And then did the command to Hitchens, who was at the wheel, saying hard to starboard. And they only had seconds. And then the iceberg was hit. Now, the damage that was done by the iceberg is interesting because it wasn't this solid gash. Sometimes you hear about this whole big gash going 300 feet. The Titanic would have sunk in a few minutes had that happened. That's not what happened. It was a series of small little holes and pokes and rips and tears and popped rivets that threatened several, many, many of the watertight compartments. And questions that underneath there was also some damage as well. And so while the ship was slowing down, that water was pouring in like crazy. And then as finally as the ship came to a stop, the entrance, the egress of the water slowed down because there wasn't as much force. And this is important. Now, while this was going on, Box Hall started to go down to check things out to see if he can find some information. Bruce Ismay comes up on the bridge and wants to know what is going on, trying to find out what has happened, why have we stopped all of that. Meanwhile, down below, the water had been coming in, and one of the people who was able to report on this, Frederick Barrett, said they started some of the pumps, and the pumps were keeping ahead of the water coming into the compartment they were in. Now, Boxhall finally works his way back up to the bridge, tells Captain Smith he couldn't find anything, didn't see anything, and Smith asked Boxhall had he seen the carpenter. And, of course, he didn't. And so he asked him to go find that. Meanwhile, several things are happening here. Uh, Boxhall is go sent to go find the carpenter, in conversation with Ismay, Captain Smith, with odd intentions, I'm not sure why, takes the, uh, the controls and puts the thing to half speed ahead, sending the message to the engine room start the engines again, and go half speed ahead. Now, down below, as Barrett had mentioned, they had started some pumps to try to control everything. And then suddenly, as the Titanic started to move again, tremendous amounts of water started to pour into the ship. And the amount of water coming in was exponential. 
and it overran the pumps. They had to leave where they were because it was just flooding. At the same time, um, uh, what was his name? Samuel Hemming, who was a lamp trimmer, came running up saying, what the heck's going on? There's tremendous amounts of water. The, the, the tarps are all billowing out from the pressure of water coming in. And it's all from the fact that they're driving the ship through the water after having the accident. The carpenter comes up and said it's flooding all over. And he goes back down and does more research. Now think about this. Now, of course, it's not running ahead for a long period of time, but let's just say about five minutes, maybe a little less. But think of the volume of water that is pushed into the ship once that happens. It's incredible the amount of water that was pushed. It flooded those front compartments. This is the dangerous and dastardly action inadvertently done by the captain that basically makes the Titanic sink faster. Now, I want you to think of all of these things, all of these components. This is all shortly after the accident. So, here's what happens. I mean, Boxhall was sent back down, and he goes down to the mailroom, and he sees the water's pouring in. And, of course, the carpenter said it's pouring in, and Hemming says there's an awful lot of pressure down there. There's a lot of water pouring in with force. This was not something that Boxhall saw before they went ahead at half speed. And perhaps... Is May in conversation with the captain? Maybe the captain said, let's go ahead and have speed. But think about this. If you have an accident with a car or with any kind of vehicle or ship, after you have that accident, are you going to drive the vehicle before inspecting it? No, that's just stupid. That is reckless. But that is exactly what Captain Smith did. This is never talked about. It's fascinating. This is such a pertinent part of the story. But never, ever, you know, watch all the movies. Do you see them do it? No, you don't see this. Now, are there witnesses to this? Because this is really controversial if you think about it. Like, this is really crazy. If you've had an accident and then you start the ship, especially if your ship is is hold, and, and then you sit down and drive the ship and push water in, and you've got to understand, with an ocean liner, with all that tonnage, all that weight, you start going through the water. That water is going to be pouring in like crazy. Now, there are witnesses. Lawrence Beasley, who was a passenger in second class, had never taken an ocean voyage in his life. So he was very observant of every little thing that happened. He noticed that the Titanic was listing slightly to port during the voyage, which was due to the fact that the coal was all moved to the port side because of that fire on the starboard side. So she listed over just a touch. But the one thing he noticed was while he was lying in bed and the accident took place, which he, he said he didn't notice, but what he did notice is that the engine stopped. And that was very noticeable. The jiggle of his mattress stopped. And then that's what got his attention. And that's what got the attention of many people. And he said he sat down and looked around, tried to figure out what was going on. 
went back to his cabin and felt the engine start again. And he said as he walked out of his room just to check a few more things, he saw two nervous ladies who were concerned about having the engine stop. And he said he took them to a tub so they could put their hands on it and they could feel the rhythm of the engines running again. And they felt better. So this is very important. It is verified. Captain Smith put the engines half speed ahead and ran the ship that is holed and damaged through the water, pouring in hundreds, perhaps thousands of tons of water, hastening how fast that area fills up and raising the stakes on how quickly the ship will sink. This is so amazingly important and never talked about. Have you heard about it? Probably not. And you know something? When you think of Night to Remember, they don't do it. They don't do it in uh, the Titanic movie by James Cameron. There was a program about the engineers keeping the lights on on the Titanic in which they actually show this happening. It's the only program which I saw where they actually got that correct. And that's a very important fact. And I wanted to make sure I mentioned this because this is the most dangerous thing that happened to the Titanic after being damaged by the iceberg, pouring all that water into the ship, overrunning the pumps, and hastening the sinking of the vessel. Thank you very much.